So if you are watching the videos we make, a few videos or somewhat more videos, and you scroll through the comments, you might have the impression or you might get the impression that what we do is for many people actually a little bit too provocative. You will read things in the comment section that, you know, it's kind of weird if you think about the fact that the only thing that we are doing here is just experimenting with a different metronome reading. We take two ticks for one. And I get that because that picture at the front end of YouTube is kind of that this topic is heavily debated and what have you. It's a pity that I cannot take you too often to what happens behind the scenes, so at this side of the camera, the many messages we get through mail, through messenger, the many Zoom calls Alberto and I or I have with young guys mostly reaching out to me or to Alberto with questions to say just how impactful the things are that we are doing. But the other day I received a message from a young guy that an email that simply blew me from my chair. I was really touched, so I asked him permission to read this message on YouTube because I think for many of you watching our videos, it might be important as well to realize that this is what happens in the real world. It's not all about debate, it's about a positive impact that can happen in people's lives. That's what drives us, that's why we keep going. So without further ado, I'll read you the entire message, sit back, I'll put a nice music under the text and there we go. Dear Wim, I hope you don't mind that I call you by your first name, but since I know you from the informal world of YouTube, I took this liberty. I decided to write this email and I got your email address from one of your videos after I came across a number of videos and commentaries that left me bitter and angry. I have indeed recently found out that a little community has been very active those last months in criticizing you and your work using aggressive and insulting methods while actually failing at giving real arguments. The violence of their speech, their obsession and the hate they seem to have towards you, their tendency at forgetting rational thinking has left me speechless. And I still don't exactly understand how people who name themselves musicians and musicologists or composers could behave like that. But in a way, I've always known that the classical music world was pretty much a reflection of our society. But I still have the foolish wish that the musical world could be a safe haven against violence and intolerance, that mutual respect, curiosity, open-mindedness, the wish to share would be the norm. Anyway, this has led me to express my support and thanks to you and all those who contribute to the Authentic Sound channel. I have always been a music lover and started to learn the piano at age 15, nine years ago. I took lessons in music schools in France during five years. As a Bach lover and very interested in the performance practice of previous eras, I searched for interpretation of Bach on clavichord. That's how I found your channel. The first video I watched was a C minor partita, not so long after you had begun your journey as a YouTuber. Little by little I watched other videos of Bach, but also Mozart, Pachelbel, but also more theoretical videos like the one on Tempo Ordinario. And what a discovery it was! How is it that it's not even professional musicians are taught that when it's so essential to the understanding of Baroque music? Then came the interviews with Lorenz Guardian. I studied social sciences, where we learned that common sense is often a biased opinion and the result of a social norm. It was not so difficult to accept that we could have been wrong about the way to read the metronome markings. And I was certainly, and still am, very interested on an intellectual level. On the musical level, I was somehow relieved. I had always felt that there was something wrong with the fast tempi advocated by hip performers. But I was certainly a little bit naive, thought that their tempi steamed from actual researchers and were authentic. And I was ashamed to like slower tempi. But still, I could not help but to think the tempi of, let's say, the Don Giovanni Overture, Mozart Requiem or Beethoven's Ninth Symphony made no musical sense. That everything was rushed 
that there were no silences, no breathing, no musical thoughts anymore, only a sort of frenetic impulse to play as fast as possible. So your videos certainly made me happy, although I was not yet aware of all the implications of the WBMP. For several reasons, I practiced the piano very little after 2017, but researched a lot about past performance practices. This is not an easy task as a musicological knowledge pretty much stays inside universities and early music departments of conservatories. Very few vulgarization books exist, and they are hard to find and rather expensive. As if amateur musicians and the curious listener should be excluded from this research that's funded in Europe by public taxes. And I think your work must be loaded on that aspect. You are one of the few to actually bring very important subjects to a greater audience. The tempo ordinario, how to read the notation in regards to the tempo, etc. And explain your thoughts on interpretation. I watched videos and conferences that I could find, read a few books that I found, which were not very instructive in fact, read historical sources, difficult to understand without the context, and the often mentioned notion of good taste is rather relative. And most of all I listened a lot, trying to understand which rules hip performers were applying. I listened also to a lot of orchestral music, trying to understand why I liked or disliked interpretations. I listened especially to old Russian conductors. I also observed how performance practices were evolving during the 20th and 21st centuries, and how sad it is to see how standardized the musical world has become. And I learned a lot about the importance of breathing, of the silences, of accentuation, articulation, of the declamatory character of music. All those things that are lost, at least for the piano, if we take the hypothesis that music was performed very fast at the end of the 18th century and in early 19th century. And that's where I came back to the questions of the tempo. I cannot really say I believe in the WBMP as it is more a matter of rational thought and musical sensitivity. I have not enough knowledge to do tempo research by myself, but there are many problems with the tempi that are considered historical and a lot of contradictions result from this. A great musician like Malcolm Bilson makes a whole conference about the importance of clarity, of playing uneven, etc. and deplores that they are not applied in performances on modern piano. But he does the exact opposite in his Beethoven sonatas. It sounds exactly the same as a performance on modern piano, maybe even faster, with even less clarity and clearly struggles keeping high speed tempi on his instrument. All the researches being made about the declamatory character of music, about its relationship with rhetoric is lost when taking too fast tempi. How is it that the minuet was supposedly slowed down at the end of the 18th century, but that we should play minuets by Mozart, Beethoven or Schubert very fast, losing its dancing character? There are so many other contradictions that I don't understand why they are not discussed, and that debate about tempo by single beat stops with the concert durations. The WBMP is the only answer I have found for these questions, although it does raise other issues. On a more personal level, it just makes sense. There has been so many works, so many composers that I have neglected because of the way they are played today. I considered Mozart as a childish composer who wrote fine tunes without musical depth, except for his minor mode works. I only discovered Schubert recently. I had always known him, but dismissed him as boring. What a waste to spend more than 20 years without understanding the beauty of his music. But since those two composers rely heavily on melody and a careful use of silence, it is not surprising that I found a very clinical way of playing them boring, without any care for bringing out all the details that make them wonderful. And there were many other works that I did not understand, most of Beethoven piano sonatas, a lot of Chopin's works, Schumann sonatas, and were to me only a flow of notes without any sense. You can imagine my surprise when I first listened to your interpretation of those works that I've always dismissed. I still remember the first time. 
It was not so long ago since that video was lost among the YouTube jungle. I heard a Waldstein sonata on your clavichord. Beethoven, by the way, sounds really great on clavichord. How was it that I never noticed how great it was? It actually made sense. I could actually see how it related to previous Baroque and classical composers. The accentuation, the inégalité, the articulation, it all made sense. This was actually music. And it was the same for every Beethoven works. And I don't thank you for making my to-do list on piano even longer. You had recorded on clavichord and the one or two that you had at that time recorded on the Fritz. There's so much to learn musically from it. And as I practiced piano more regularly, I certainly made a lot of progress. And hearing Alberto playing was certainly a great discovery as well. From the first notes I heard of him, it was the Schubert's impromptu, I was mesmerized by his musicality, despite the tempo that was slower than I expected. And I couldn't listen to anything after the third impromptu. I'm also very glad that you were experimenting with the rhythm inigo. I feel somehow that the WPMP is the key to approach the performance practices of that time. And practical experiment is a great way of learning. I'm working now on Schubert's A minor sonata, trying to reconstruct the tempo by analyzing the notation. Not an easy task. And taking slower tempi forces me to adapt my playing, find new solutions, to feel every beat of the bar. And in equal rhythms, accentuation, articulation come in fact rather naturally. Playing evenly, without much accentuation and with a lot of pedal cannot make any illusion with a slower tempo. And that might be why fast tempi or very wide tempo fluctuations are so often taken. I've yet to try it besides sight reading, but I think it works also great for Chopin. WBMP also leaves room to experiment at the tempo rubato in its old meaning. This is as if a whole other world was opening behind those pieces that become completely different. How fantastic is it to have a minuet which actually sounds like a minuet? To have the scherzi sound like dances and the evolution from minuet to scherzo, to make all the little dots between baroque and romantic composers, to enjoy simple things like the temper silencing the strings. I certainly have much more pleasure when I listen or play. But besides these theoretical and practical aspects, there is also something that is somehow ideological. Behind the whole debate single double beat, there are two ways of hearing music and of playing it. On one hand, we have an established order, a musical world where virtuosity is only a digital performance, where the soloist is at the center of the music, where most of the repertoire must only be accessible to the professional pianists, where appearances matter more than anything, where piano students must not be critical, Although the primary duty of every educational institution should be to develop one's critical mind, where music is a consumer good. And on the other hand, you propose a subversive way of considering music. And from what I've heard in your video, you assume this subversive part, that it is more about the composer's intention than the performer, that is closer to his audience that does not consider that the great pieces of the repertoire should be inaccessible to most, where virtuosity is more about musical insight, attention to the details than speed, that consider music as more than an entertainment. Here I come back to the first lines of my email. To call an established order and its social norms in question always leads to violent reactions from those who detain privileged positions. Their contempt towards your subscribers and their assumed crusade-like mission to defend the right way to play and to listen to music are quite telling in that regard. The fact that your channel has been growing a lot lately, that other musicians joined you certainly made them even more threatened. But I still don't understand how it could lead to such proportions in the musical world. But that is something that unfortunately does not only concern the tempo research. The situations of conservatories and orchestras in France are rather dire and I'm probably not wrong to assume that this is the case in other countries as well. I'm sorry to have written so much when I say so little, but I was becoming rather obsessive about this and I had to write out these thoughts. In two words, thank you. I wish you and Alberto all the best in these troubled times. And so guys, what is there left to add?
In a nutshell, this beautiful letter that says a lot instead of saying nothing at all is summarizing, in fact, the reasons, the drive that we feel every day to continue this, to go back in time, to we enjoy this fascinating journey, of course we do, but to bring it to you and see what happens there behind the lens of that camera I'm speaking to right now, behind that lens, there's you. There's you sitting, there's you waiting, there's you watching, there's you listening. And seeing then a response like this coming back, you can imagine what it does with me, what it does with Alberto. We've, we put our heart and souls in this. Mostly, partly, mostly, whatever, because we love doing that. We could do, continue doing this for the entire rest of our lives. But making a difference, making a kind of impact, as reading here in this letter of this young guy in France who started to play the piano again, who started to like music of our greatest composers again, to understand it, not because of me, not because of Alberton, but because of just reading the metronome numbers differently. That's of course huge. And I thought it was worth sharing with you because I know there are many like him there at the other side of the camera. Many of you I know here on this channel, virtually know, we've never seen each other, but if I see your names and the channel pop up, I am in a way happy. We have this community. We have these premieres on Monday, oftentimes on Wednesday, where we meet. We have the Patreon hangouts where people come together, when they were sharing the things they are passionate about. And yes, there's work to do, and yes, there is still I think we need some time to establish this WPMP practice as, you know, as a kind of accepted experimentation in the historical informed, informed practice. It's not yet there today, but there's a lot going on. Maybe not always in front of the camera, in the front end of YouTube, but I know in many of your lives, in many cases, behind the scenes, there, you watching there on this chair right now, there is a lot going on. And that makes me happy, hopeful, not only for us, but also for you, for those generations also of young students that now have to go, undergo like a practice in which I've been told that every conservatory has their physical um, therapist to help overcome them injuries. That didn't happen. It was not a practice in the 90s when I was in conservatory. It was already bad back then. People went to doctors. They didn't talk about it. Now the doctors are part of conservatories. I mean, if that can change because of the work we're doing, if that attitude can change, indeed that people, young students in conservatories and in, in universities can start asking the real questions instead of like listening and don't take the risk of falling out the system, that can happen. Imagine what an impact we make just by a different reading of the metronome. That's actually all we do and the implication of that is gigantic and the joy for us to read that you guys are loving that most that that music so much more that it brings that music so much closer to you it's more emotion that makes me feel privileged and blessed so thank you for reaching out to us thank you for being here with us it's an unbelievable journey that i'm so happy to continue with all of you thank you